Okay. <laughs> um, first time fully filming, almost fully set up. I think, I think we might have our lighting right where I want it to be. Am I close enough? Am I close? Should I get closer? <laughs> okay. You can see the top of that. Can't let you know any of the equipment behind the scenes, right? Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm a wedding planner, and me saying welcome back might be a little bit weird if it's your first time. So if it is, welcome, and I'm glad to have you. And for those of you who tuned in for last week's live, thank you so much for joining me. It was it was very stressful, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And the whole reason that we ended up doing a live last week is because I really wanted to show you guys how truly helpful it is to get live advice, like specific advice to you. We are launching something called the Master Plan Club, where you and a group of other people engaged will submit their questions ahead of time and then I will answer them for you. Um, so the Master Plan Club is $29 a month or $279 if you wanna pay for a whole year in advance. If you feel like you want advice from a wedding planner, but you don't wanna pay for a wedding planner, I'm your girl, I got you. Jump on down to the link in the description box to sign up for the Master Plan Club and get in on those phone calls. Right now this group is really small, which means I get to give very detailed and pointed advice, which is going to be absolutely phenomenal for those who've already signed up. So if you haven't done so and you're interested, come hang out with me once a month, talk all things wedding and give like, and get like actual responses from a real life wedding planner. Let's plan this wedding together, shall we? down below. Now that we've gotten that little detail out of the way, in this week's video, we are going to be talking about the top 10 most unique things I have ever seen at a wedding. Now, if you're new here, then then this will be a first disclaimer. If, if you are not, then you know this is coming. Guys, I only know the experience of the weddings that I have worked with, so what may be considered unique to me could be really common for you guys, or you may have seen it before. And after the amount of weddings that we've done, if anything sticks out in my head as unique, and were memorable, then that's kind of saying something. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Honestly, I get asked this question all the time. It's in the comments, it's DM'd to me, um, it's asked in lives, what's the most unique thing you've ever seen at a wedding? So I thought with that, let's just compile a top 10 list of the ones that I've seen. Now the reason that I find these to be unique is because they are just different from what I am used to seeing. So basically I pulled together some of the top 10 most unique things that we have ever seen at an event. First one is arguably one of the sweetest moments. Um, it was from the Building 177 behind the scenes wedding. Um, I'll go ahead and link it right up here if you guys wanna see it. And I'll put the timestamp for it right here if you wanna check that out. Lilia and Alex did the coolest first dance I have ever seen ever seen. I don't know if they met dancing or took dancing classes together, but these two were so light on their feet and I'm not sure if they were technically swing dancing. Lilia, if you're watching this, please correct me in the comments below. <laughs> okay. But to see them throw themselves around on the dance floor with such fervor and such passion will honestly be one of the most memorable things of any event I've ever worked that will stick in my brain for the rest of my life. It was so cool and so fun to watch them just use their talents and skills and really lean into that for their first dance. Instead of just going for something slow and sweet, which of course, like, if you've been around long enough, you know I cry during a first dance no matter what anyways, but this might be the first time I didn't cry during a first dance because it was so fun. I'm pretty sure in that behind the scenes, I kept being like, my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much. Our faces hurt. Definitely having a fun choreographed first dance is one of the most unique things I have ever seen at an event. The second most unique thing that I have seen at an event is a ginormous floral hoop that the bride literally made herself. I think the groom might have helped too. But we're talking massive, not hula hoop size. I'll throw a picture here up on the screen. It was so large and they suspended it using fishing line so it would hang from the trees. Now in the end it didn't quite hang just like a perfect circle, but the fact that they were able to create something like this looked unlike any other ceremony backdrop we have ever worked with. Yes, we've had geometric pattern backdrops. Yes, we've had like a chevron pattern backdrop. All of those are very cool. But this one stands out in my mind simply because it's different than anything else we've ever seen. Okay, the next, the next one is like the stuff that little girl dreams are made of, okay? Like the princess dreams that I don't know I had and you might've had as a small child. It was an entrance into the ceremony on a horse drawn carriage. 
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Do you know how long I had dreamt of doing that? In fact, when I was a little girl, I was a flower girl in a wedding and the bride was brought in on a horse-drawn carriage. And it wasn't until I worked this event where this bride was also brought in on a horse-drawn carriage that I went, oh man, why didn't I remember that as a little kid, I dreamt of doing that and then I didn't even do it at my own wedding. Like, I think we need to do a vow renewal just so I can come in on a horse-drawn carriage, okay? So if Elias and I ever get to that point where we're ready to do a vow renewal, y'all better remind me that I want to be pulled in by a horse-drawn carriage, okay? Like, what a romantic way of starting your ceremony. It's just, like, that's princess stuff, okay? And some of y'all may not be into that, but every once in a while, I just, like... I like the sweet romantic stuff, okay? It's cute. Now, of course, if I, I think I've probably shared this story before, but that horse like crawled. It was moving so slow. I think we started like 30 minutes late, if not 40 minutes late, because the horse barely moved. So it, that kind of takes away from the romance of it, but also makes it a little bit more unique. <laughs> but the general concept was really, really fun. So these next two are definitely f much more of a cultural thing that I have just simply not experienced before. The first one is when the groom's mom and I think uncle and his partner did a hula dance as a part of the reception. It was so sweet. And it's actually one of the weddings before I even started filming or doing anything like this. And, and I still kick myself that I hadn't started when I wanted to because I would have had something like this captured. It was such a soft and sweet hula dance too. I, I think, uh, his uncle was singing for a little bit and then he came out and joined uh, the groom's mom. And it was such a tender way of expressing their love and their joy for the situation and also expressing their culture for everyone to take part in. So while, yes, I have seen hula dances done before, I had never seen one done at a wedding and that was such a sweet moment to bear witness to and such a cool thing to be a part of, to take a beautiful part of their culture and infuse it into their wedding day. The next one though, I did, I did happen to catch on camera. And if you guys remember this, it's from January of last year. It's the Chinese lion money dance. And again, depending on where you're from and your culture, you may be used to this kind of thing. And, and I've brought it up probably in like seven different videos at this point. And you guys were like, we get it, Jamie. You thought it was cool. No, you guys. Oh, it was so freaking cool. Uh, it was another one of those moments where I'm like, I can't stop smiling. I can't believe that I'm bearing witness to this. I've never seen anything like this, like chills all over my body, even though it was in Hawaii, it was like 84 degrees out and it just rained, so it was sticky, but I still got the chills. It just was so cool. I love the fact that the bride and the groom really wanted to infuse and honor their culture as a part of their reception. Again, I'll go ahead and link that up here and I'll uh, try to timestamp it down here for you if you guys are interested in checking that out. This next thing is honestly so cute. It's so cute and I'm so glad the couple did this. They were not fans of cake. They just didn't really like cake in general. Um, but you know what they did like? A whole lot. They put it in rhymes, on signs, and they also put it in place of their cake. Instead of doing a traditional wedding cake, this stinking cutie couple did pancakes. Pancakes with maple syrup, butter, and a little cake topper with some flower petals. It was like, I guess in the grand scheme of pancakes, it was a rather hearty sized stack, but it was much smaller than of course a traditional cake would be. But I will never forget that they just took their love for their favorite breakfast food and they're like, you know what, why not? Like we don't like cake, but we love pancakes. Why don't we do that instead? And mix, of course, with their unique and very personalized cake topper. Which leads me to my next thing, where that I will never forget. The Jess and Jess show. This was, I think, just over a year ago. Again, behind the scenes, I'll list it up here and I'll try to timestamp the moment right here. Um, this moment, this wedding was epic. Okay, so if you have not seen the behind the scenes of this wedding, you definitely need to go check that one out because it had some of the most unique things I have ever seen at events. We're talking like cool sparklers shooting up from the floor, okay? Jess had like three different dresses, okay? There were giant marquee letters, so many unique things. But I only wanted to pick one because I didn't want to all be from the same event. One of my favorite things about this event was their custom 3D printed cake topper. They both went in individually in their outfits for the day and they were 3D printed. You guys, they even got the detail of Jess's tattoo on her shoulder. It was insane to me. I think I remember the name of the company. I'll try to leave it listed down below. They are in, uh, I 
think like North LA. But the fact that it was like their actual faces and their actual bodies 3D printed, I thought was super, super fun. And again, if, if Elias and I do a, uh, a vow renewal, I'm getting one of those, okay? I'm, I'm gonna get 3D printed. This next one we've actually seen, I think at like two events, if not three, but I love it so very much and I love every time that people do this. Um, instead of doing a welcome sign or, you know, just as an additional piece of decor, they would turn themselves into a movie poster and find very clever ways of basically saying, it's our wedding day, starring him and her. And a picture of them, really funny. I think this one says like highly acclaimed, five-star rating, those kinds of things. And I really, I've always viewed those as a really fun way to set the tone. So guests really know what to expect for the rest of your day. Like if you're gonna start off with a movie poster or like a parody of yourselves, they're in for a good time. And then of course, it's something that they can use in their home afterwards. And the second last one is about a grand exit. Now, you would think that I would use this as the last one, but the last one is so good that it had to be the last one, all right? Of course, we'll get to that one in just a second, but this grand exit, this couple knew they wanted some sort of something to happen at grand exit. They also knew it was gonna be happening after sunset. This is at a public park just outside of Calabasas where basically there's no lights once the sun goes down and they were doing their grand exit after the sun went down. And because it was a public park in California, we couldn't do sparklers and we were aware that anything that they threw had to be swept up. But our problem was if it was nighttime and there was no lights, how would we be able to see everything to pick all of it up? Cause we certainly didn't want to leave a mess behind at the park and we definitely didn't want to be fined the next day either. So they came up with the genius idea of using glow sticks. We snapped so many of those things and passed them out. So guests had like anywhere from three to five each. So when it came time to throw them, the guests were shaking them, they were tossing them up in the air. It made for, of course, really fun photo moments and the guests really, really enjoyed it. And we were able to see all of them to be able to pick them up, which was a huge bonus. That means we weren't leaving any litter behind, it means it wasn't a mess, and it meant that we still had that grand exit moment. Now last, but most certainly not least, okay? This is my favorite wedding moment, probably of all time. Is that a bold statement? Yes, but it's one of the funniest dang things I've ever seen, okay? This couple is actually the same one as the glow stick couple. And during toast time, they shared that uh, they had seen this at someone else's wedding and they wanted to pass on the tradition. So I don't know where it originally started. All I know is I saw this couple do this. They had an award ceremony for their family and friends, complete with little mini awards to pass out. And these awards were modeled quite a bit like those nominations you would see at the back of a yearbook, like most likely to be president, most eligible bachelor, that probably wouldn't be in a yearbook, but that was also one of the awards, um, most improved, best style. This couple grabbed awards and gave them out. They would announce it, they'd be like, and the best dress award goes to Brandon. Brandon, we love and appreciate your style. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at his outfit as he's strolling up on up here to claim his award and like just really leaned into it. That is by far the most unique thing I have ever seen at a wedding, an award ceremony with some of the goofiest, wackiest and silliest awards that had the whole crowd you guys in stitches. It was hilarious. It was such a wonderful way to like really showcase the couple's personality and really have a fun time interacting with their family and with their friends. Uh, 10 out of 10 recommend doing an award ceremony at your wedding. Please, please someone do that, okay? Future clients also love to do that again. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. So hopefully that answers the question I get asked all the time, which is what are some of the most unique things you've ever seen at weddings? There you go, there's 10 of them. If you haven't done so already, like this video, like go give it a thumbs up, like literally go down there and give it a thumbs up. It really does help out and tells the algorithm that something good's happening here. And subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. If you are interested in the Master Plan Club, jumping on a phone call with me once a month for 29 bucks, get on down there. The group is very small right now, which makes me really excited, but at a certain point it will fill up and we'll have to stop taking people in because I really want to be intentional with this time with you guys. And until next week, bye guys.